Coach Corey Wayne, and this is my video coaching newsletter. And the topic of today's newsletter is going to be wanting someone who doesn't want you. Well, I've got one email here from a viewer. I've got a quote that I wrote in this topic. I'm going to go through the quote, and I'm going to go through his email because this is the topic. This is a big thing that I see in a lot of people, a lot of men and women both, who come to my work and they're having, they're struggling in their personal life. It's definitely something that everyone should be aware of. And so the quote I wrote says, when someone does not have the people or circumstances they want in their lives, the reason is the story that they tell themselves about why they can't or don't deserve to have what they want. When you don't believe you deserve to be financially secure, have a career or business that you love, have great friends who love you for you or a lover to love you for who you are, With all of your flaws and faults, you will say and do things consciously and unconsciously to continually make this your reality. People will do more to move away from potential pain than they will risk to experience success because of the potential pain of failure and loss they may experience in the pursuit of their grandest dreams and goals. Success is always the result of overcoming failure fear, pain, and challenges. If you're unwilling to risk experiencing potential pain and failure, then you're never going to come even close to reaching your full potential. Successful people know and expect achievement to come only after a long journey of experiencing pain, failure, setbacks, and frustration, in addition to the elation that comes along with the thrill of victory. Let's go ahead and jump right into his email. He says, hey coach, I've been following your work for a long time now and I've also purchased your book and read it. 10 to 15 times, I assume. I've learned a lot from your wisdom, but when my own emotions are involved, I'm kind of starting to have doubts about what you say, ha ha ha. Well, this is where repetition comes in. If you've been practicing the things that I teach, you would know that they work. But if you've read the book and you just sit at home and you watch video after video after video and you haven't read the book 10 to 15 times and then you meet a woman that you really like and your emotions become engaged, it's almost impossible to to do the right thing. Number one, because your emotions are engaged and number two, you don't know the fundamentals. So it's like Confucius said many thousands of years ago, success depends upon prior preparation. Without said preparation, there is sure to be failure. So it doesn't sound like you've prepared yourself very well. So if you're struggling and you haven't prepared well, how can you possibly expect to succeed effortlessly? It's just simply not going to happen. It's like having a chemistry or a physics class in college, never going to class, never opening the book, and walking in to take only the test and expecting you're going to ace the test when you haven't even studied the material. It's just not going to happen. This bottle of wine strategy, it's a bit sour. You know that there are things that you can have and women who are not very much into you. How can you live in peace with yourself when you know that some women that you really like are just not that into you? When you love yourself and you value yourself and you respect yourself, you're going to demand and you expect to have high standards that the other person is going to feel the same way about you. And if the other person doesn't feel the same way about you, why would you want to keep somebody in your life who doesn't want to keep you in theirs? That's insane. People who get hung up on people they can't have, it's because of a story they tell themselves that they don't deserve to be loved for who they are. So they go and they get hung up on people who aren't interested. This is, if you read my book, this is what I talk about. I did a lot in my 20s and in my teenage years. I was kind of, oh, she's got a boyfriend. Oh, if I just become friends with her and I'm friends long enough, eventually she'll fall in love and see what a great guy I am and want to be, make me her boyfriend. Never fucking happened in any of the dozens of cases where I tried that shit in my teenage years and in my 20s. It's a sure recipe for failure. And so with this, what can I already tell here is this guy has a certain model of the world that he doesn't deserve to have what he really wants. And so he's just thinking he's going to be like the guy in the movies where if he just stays persistent enough and hung up on somebody long enough, eventually they're going, you know what? Aw, shucks. You really are a great guy. I'm going to fall in love with you and let's live happily ever after like they do in the movies. You're deluding yourself. And just the fact that what you've shared so far, you don't obviously know the book 
very well. If you don't know the book very well, it doesn't sound like you've been practicing what it teaches either. If you're not practicing, and repetition is a mother of skill. Excellence is not a singular act. It's a habit. So you met a girl you really like and now you're hung up on her. So you don't really don't have to risk any rejection and therefore you stay hung up on somebody who doesn't want you. That's not something a high status male would do. A high status male is going to say, I'm fucking awesome. I'm a catch. Oh, you don't want me? Huh. You're lost and you really feel that way. Hey, give me a call if you change your mind. And you continue moving and circulating about the world until you find somebody who really likes you and who really likes her. It's just like when I tell guys to ask out a hundred different women. The reality is numbers from men, all thousands of men all over the world, these are the numbers. You ask out a hundred women, 10 to 12 of them will go out with you. That means 80 to 90% of the women you ask out are going to shoot you down. And these are the women that look you in the eye and smile and make mutual eye contact with you. And so out of the 10 or 12 that go out with you, if you follow what I teach in my book, as long as you know it by reading the book 10 to 15 times and follow it and practice it and rehearse it, three to five of them will end up sleeping with you. Those are the numbers. That's the way it is. You're going to get rejected most of the time. And if you're not willing to do that, if you're not willing to ask out that many different women, well, there's not a damn thing that I can do for you because you got to participate in your own rescue. If you're not willing to take any action, it's like what Buddha said, faith without action is meaningless and you're reading you supposedly have read my book and you're watching videos but you're not taking any action quite frankly you're wasting your fucking time it's a mental circle jerk for you you got to participate in your own rescue and you're not doing anything you're sitting on the sideline hoping that things are going to be different hoping this whoever this woman is that you're hung up on is all of a sudden go shucks ah stupid me Wow, what a great catch you are. We should just get married. Fuck it. Let's do it. He says, I would love I would I would have to summarize your strategy in one sentence. I'd say it's a don't fall in love strategy, just do, don't feel. That's a bunch of nonsense. That tells you right then and there, you don't know my work and you don't know my book. You may have read it one time, but so what you're trying to do is you're trying to belittle what I teach. You're trying to put a label on it so you don't have to do anything. Oh, this is a bunch of nonsense. Just like you suggested in the first paragraph. Well, I've been following for a while and I'm starting to think it doesn't work. Well, how would you know? You haven't even tried anything that you've been learning from me. There's no evidence of anything in your email of any attempts that you've made. And you certainly haven't asked out a hundred different women since when you've been following my work. That's because feelings are a source of suffering if they are not reciprocated. Suffering comes from wanting reality to be other than it is. So if you have feelings, if you have attraction for somebody who doesn't feel it, if you love yourself, you're going to move on. But if you stay there and you're pissed off and you're frustrated that it's not changing, well, yeah, you're going to suffer and you're doing it to yourself. First, one must be sure that there is reciprocation and only then, gradually, he's allowed to feel. You're going to feel what you feel, dude. You really can't control your feelings any more than you can control being attracted to somebody. Attraction is not a choice after all. Feeling is sometimes risking putting oneself in danger of a painful experience. Exactly. You can't steal second base and still keep your foot on first. Progress always involves risk. And if you're going to date and you're going to ask women out, you're going to get rejected. You're going to get rejected more than you succeed. That's the reality. But it's obvious you're not doing anything. He says, your strategy involves no emotional risk, no pain. Really? That's bullshit. Do you find a formula for making gains without risking anything? Of course not. You know what they say, no pain, no gain. You dismiss that and you just say, fuck that shit. Now you're putting words in my mouth. Again, this is your way of trying to belittle me and trying to belittle my work and go, oh, this is a bunch of nonsense. It doesn't work. If I just stay hung up on this girl and I like her long enough eventually my liking her is going to make her like me you're delusional dude never going to happen attraction is not a choice women know within three seconds whether or not they would go out with you you're also an advocate of first impressions i'm not i'm not an advocate of it it this is reality this is what i do for a living dude i coach thousands of men and women all over the world in every country every kind of religious and societal background I teach human behavior. I teach what works. If you've been following me long enough, you've seen countless success stories that I've read in video after video. You can see it in all the positive comments and reviews that I get on Amazon.com of my book. You can see it in all the success stories that people post in the YouTube comments on countless videos. 
The evidence is there. You're just choosing to ignore it. And it's like Ayn Rand said. You can ignore reality, but you can't ignore the consequences of ignoring reality. And that's what you're doing. You're ignoring reality because you don't want to accept it. Because the reality is you don't want to risk anything. You don't want to risk asking out 100 different women because you're afraid of getting rejected. You say that if she's not into you in the first seconds and there's no chance she'll fall in love with you. She's in, either into you or she's not. Why don't you believe that when she knows you better, some aspects of your personality that are not seen in the spot can start to shine in her eyes? Because I'm 44 fucking years old, dude, and I've talked to thousands and thousands of women. I've gone out on thousands and thousands of dates in my life, and I've had sex thousands and thousands of times. I know how women are, dude, and I've been teaching this shit for years. That's reality. I have experience. You obviously don't. If you were getting experience, you would understand where I'm coming from. But instead, you're sitting on the sidelines, and you're throwing labels at my work trying to say, oh, well, that's not valid. Therefore, I don't have to do anything, and since you're not doing anything – Nothing's changed in your life. Life happens when you move. Stagnation happens when you die. You're suffering from the paralysis of analysis and you're not doing anything to help yourself. That's why your life's not changing. And that's why you've been following me for a long time, but you're not getting anywhere. The first impression approach puts a lot of emphasis on looks. It means that if you're not good looking, you have relatively slim chances of getting the woman you want simply because most women will not be attracted to you before becoming familiar with your personality, which takes some time. The bottom line is men and women are both – we are typically attracted to other people who have a similar facial structure to our own. That's reality. A woman who I think is drop dead gorgeous, she might go, eh, she's okay. And a woman that you think is the most beautiful woman in the world, I might look at her and go, She's kind of fucking butt ugly, dude. That's the way it is. Beauty's in the eye of the beholder. But again, this is part of your story. I'm not good looking. I'm not attractive enough. And so I have to convince women of my personality to get them to like me. But the real problem is you won't talk to anybody. You won't talk to any women. You won't ask any women out. And therefore, you're never going to get any evidence that women are going to like you for you. By looks, I mean physical features and also some other relatively superficial characteristics of a person like financial situation as shown by his dressing for example well you know what i pretty much i live in florida and it's fucking usually pretty hot here so i wear shorts and t-shirts and flip-flops most of the time when i can and in the winter i'm usually wearing a nice hugo boss sweatsuit outfit why because i like to be comfortable i don't really like blue jeans but i will get dressed up at times and wear blue jeans and a nice dress shirt for my girl because she likes the way i look in it but she also likes the way I look in my workout clothes, in my, in my normal everyday attire. So it's not about the clothes that you wear. It's how you wear them. There are some things she cannot see immediately which may be very attractive if and when she sees it. Well, it sounds like whoever it is that you're hung up on, she doesn't even know you because you're too much of a pussy to even talk to her. For example, persistence in and of itself is an attractive trait to some women. Well, when you keep persisting with a woman who says she's not interested, eventually she's going to file a restraining order against your ass. I even went over this in the video newsletter that I did, The Clueless Creepy Stalker, recently. You should check that out. See how well being persistent worked for that guy. The police pulled him into the station and sat him down and said, if you don't leave this fucking girl alone, it's going to be – get really dicey for you dude in other words we're gonna put your fucking sorry ass in jail that's reality that's what happens when you pursue and act like a stalker like they do in movies obviously in the movies you're getting the fantasy of whoever wrote the script and it's usually the fucking dork that sat in the back of the class and never got laid in high school anyways and still has no jack shit about women because if he did he certainly wouldn't write that bullshit you see the same thing over and over and over and over in countless fucking movies if the guy is just persistent long enough no matter how butt ugly he is he gets the beautiful girl that's just not reality dude Thus, if you persist, it may attract them as it tells them that you're willing to go out of your way to achieve your goals. In other words, approval-seeking behavior. In that case, she's the goal. Also, she may later learn about skills that you have that she knows nothing about when she first sees you. This guy just goes on and on and on. The same fucking story. Note that you're an advocate of pursuing challenging careers, but you're not an advocate of pursuing challenging women. 
you're going to get hired with somebody who reciprocates interest. And if there's 50 potential employers to go work for, you're going to want to go and talk to all 50 because not all of them are going to be hiring. And not all of them you're really going to work for and they're going to want you to work for them. That's the reality. That's why you have multiple choices, multiple options. It's the same thing with friends. It's the same thing with women. You don't go and pursue and act like a stalker to somebody because you want to make them your friend. Eventually, they're going to fucking whip your ass because they're going to get tired of you acting weird and creepy. That's reality. You're deluding yourself. You're not even paying any attention to reality. Isn't it just a matter of personal taste around which you built the philosophy of living that you enthusiastically preach to others? Well, I teach what works and I see it all the time. Even if you think I'm full of shit, apply the things that I teach and you'll see that it works. Again, look at all the positive reviews on Amazon.com of all the people that saved their relationships, saved their marriages, got a girlfriend, turned her lives around. You see it in the YouTube comments. I read it in the success stories and YouTube videos all the fucking time. Those people, those are real men and women because they're actually taking action. They're actually doing something to help themselves. You're not doing anything. Your total 10 is something along the lines of a supermodel confident in having a successful career. Yeah, I like beautiful women. Why? I just do. But again, my view of beauty, you may go, nah, she's kind of average. I'm not really into her and vice versa. It may be that your strategy works best for guys who are total, whose total 10 is similar to yours. For me, a supermodel is out of the question. What will I do with her? Hang out, have fun and hook up? normal things you're putting a particular woman on a pedestal and again you're not talking to anybody so you have no life experience so quite frankly this whole email is a bunch of fucking drivel and you're talking out your ass what do i need her for i think i'm looking for a spiritual connection a woman who is deep looks attractive but by no means is a supermodel well you know what it's never going to happen until you open that big hole in your face and you start talking to women I don't care so much about how successful she is as long as she would love me for who I am. That's fine. Maybe for different types of women, different strategies apply. Nope, you treat all women the same. Again, I speak from life experience, dude. I'm 44 years old. I teach what works. My work speaks for itself. There's plenty of people who are applying my work. Thousands of people all over the world are getting the same success and they're getting the results. It is what it is. If you want to ignore that and continue to ignore reality and all the evidence that's around you on my YouTube channel, on my Amazon.com book page where all the reviews are on my book, my website, then there's nothing I can do to help you. You may as well unsubscribe and go follow somebody else because there's not a fucking thing I can do to help you. Anyway, your work is fascinating and there are just some – these are just some of my some of my thoughts that I'm trying to challenge you with. Keep it up and thanks. Well. I'm telling you, when your balls finally drop and you decide to start acting like a man, get off your fucking ass and go ask out 100 different women. That means go to the mall, watch the video that I did. It's on the homepage of my YouTube channel called Improving Your Social Skills. It's about 12 minutes or so long. Go to the mall on Saturdays, on Sundays or whatever your two days a week are off and for two to three hours do exactly what it says in that video. So over the course of two to three hours in each day, you can ask out 10 or 12 different women. Keep a log of it. That's your evidence. All your results of your approaches, keep evidence of it. And the numbers tend to be to work out exactly what they are. But again, you're not, you know, two to three hours a week on Saturday or two to three hours on Saturday, two to three hours on Sunday, you can bang out 25 different approaches and asking those women out for dates in one weekend. Four weeks, you're at 100. That's a month basically. It's that simple. That's your assignment. That's what you need to do. And until you're willing to do that, there's nothing I can do to help you. You may as well save your time and go continue watching movies and living in a fantasy world because you know your life's never going to get any better until you're willing to do something to help yourself. If you keep doing what you've always done, which obviously is nothing – then you're going to continue to get what you've always got. The definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again, expecting a different result. If you're happy with that, then by all means, keep doing what you're doing. So if you'd like to get my help personally, the quickest way is to book a paid phone, Skype, or email coaching session. You can choose any of those options by going to my website, clicking the products tab at the top of your screen, and just follow the instructions for booking whichever option works best for you. And I will talk to you soon. 